Robert Peterson offers a first course from Tucson. It features sweet potato gnocchi served with a variety of vegetables and a basil tomato cream sauce. The main course is prepared by Michel Marseille at Hammond, Louisiana. It's a ballotine of quail served with pasta, a truffle mousse, garnished with champagne grapes. Finally, Daniel Orr does dessert from Gustavino's in New York City. It is a refreshing and simple melon soup served with fresh berries and a passion fruit sorbet. Bob Peterson is executive chef at Hacienda del Sol in Tucson. He began his career at 15, working in a steakhouse, then worked for Donna Norton at Cafe Terracotta in Tucson. After attending the Western Culinary Institute, he cooked in Colorado before coming back. Here's his sweet potato gnocchi. Making the roasted tomato basil cream, we're heating up our saucepan. We're going to have a little bit of garlic, a little bit of shallots, both chopped, fresh basil, roasted tomatoes, which are Roma tomatoes that have been quartered, tossed with a little bit of olive oil, uh, sugar, and kosher salt, and then roasted for about two and a half hours at 250 degrees until they're nice and brown and caramelized and sugars have had a chance to come out and very flavorful. Uh, we also have a little bit of veg stock, a little bit of cream as well to finish off this, a little salt and pepper as well. Clarified butter. To saute the shallots and garlic. This is all a preference as far as how much garlic you like. I like a little more shallots than garlic. Now we don't want to allow this to burn. but just to saute and just to brown just a touch. We're going to let that saute and then we're going to deglaze the pan with a little bit of the vegetable stock and we'll allow that to reduce by half. And then we're going to go ahead and add in the tomatoes and then the cream. And then allow that to reduce by about a third. Then we're going to puree this, strain it, and add the basil. If you're wanting to make a sauce that's going to take a while to, to cook, then you want to go ahead and use a dry basil as that allows the, uh, the basil to come out a little bit over time. Whereas fresh basil, the flavors will come out very quickly and then they will disappear. So you lose some of it. And a lot of people think that fresh basil is always the way to go. But if you're going to do that, then it's always best to finish off with the fresh basil as opposed to cooking a long amount of time. Go ahead and add in the tomatoes. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to puree all this afterwards so the size doesn't matter right now. You can do a rough chop if need be. I'm going to go ahead and heat up the cream on the side to allow a little bit quicker time. Wow, it was already hot. Yeah. Being in the salamander helps. The mixture is reduced. Cream looks pretty close here. I'm going to go ahead and puree. Now, the scary thing that happens with the blender a lot of times is that you want to just turn it on real fast and if you got something really hot, you're going to go ahead and blow it all over yourself and possibly burn yourself, uh, but definitely stain your clothes for sure. So, I'm go ahead and add this in. The rest of the tomatoes here. 
We may need to reduce this down just a little bit more, but we'll go ahead and do that on the stove as need be. Always have the lid on, and if you have an extra towel, it doesn't hurt to have it. Um, and what term I use is jogging, uh, jogging the blender, which is a quick on and off motion until you get it rolling smooth so you don't take that chance of blowing. And you've got, as you can see, everything gets under pressure with this heat and you've got steam coming out. And you add a little motion to that steam and it can go all over you. So. Sauce is nice and thick and as we strain it out, we're gonna get all the impurities we don't want, extra little chunks of garlic or or tomatoes that just didn't did not uh, come out very well. Get that out there. I think that'll work just fine. Once again, we're gonna use strain method here. Add the fresh basil into there as well. Stir it up, nice red creamy color. Almost kind of looks like tomato soup mom used to make. Nice thick consistency, holds its shape well. And you can always adjust this for thickness as needed. We're gonna go ahead and make the sweet potato gnocchi dough now. What I have done is taking, taken um, sweet potatoes you need to use sweet potatoes and not yams. Yams have too much water in them and they will not, the consistency will just not hold up. I've roasted these for about half an hour to 45 minutes, uh, about 375, 400 degrees, depending on your oven. If you have a convection oven, it'll go a lot faster, a little bit better. Uh, if you have a conventional oven, go a little bit higher heat, it'll help. Uh, what we're doing here is caramelizing the sugars in the sweet potato. Along with this is two egg yolks and two whole eggs three tablespoons of butter, and approximately a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. This is approximately two pounds of sweet potatoes. The ingredients are mixed with a paddle attachment. The finished dough is chilled before use. Touch more flour, work it just a touch, don't need too much, just to get it to where it's at a working stage. And I'll go ahead and cut off a small segment. You grab me a box grater. I'm going to roll this out into logs. Thank you. The typical gnocchi you'll see has a rounded edge on it. You can take that, you can get that by rolling it down the back side of a grater. Depending on the size you want, you can change it up a little bit and get some funky shapes in there. I'm going to go ahead and blanch these off now. Nice salted boiling water. Basically, when these come to the surface and float, and I'll let them float and cook for about an extra two to three minutes just to make sure that all of the flour has cooked out of it. You don't want it to be too doughy. The finished gnocchi go into a pan with sweet peas, chopped leeks, and small tomatoes. Nice color coming out. Let them sear up a little bit more. Go ahead and add the tomatoes in. A touch of kosher salt. Presentation begins with the tomato cream sauce. Arrange these. Fried leeks and blue cheese finish. And crumbled Maytag. Basil in there. Go ahead and give a nice sprig to finish off the plate.
Michabel Inn and Restaurant on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain offers an evocative setting with its Greek Revival mansion and gardens. But the food is the centerpiece here. Chef owner Michel Marseille demonstrates classic French technique with dishes like this ballotine of quail. Yes, you know, we'll take some ground pork over here. First, we're going to do the quail ballotine vigneron. Vigneron is winter uh, things. So you take a little bit ground pork. Ground pork. And then some mushroom. Put a little bit seasoning. This is herbs, a little salt. Okay. Mix it together. Take the debon quail. Put a little bit liver, duck liver. Fresh duck liver. So that's make the ballotine. Take a little stock. Chicken stock. And we'll put it to back. At 375 for 20 minutes. Then you separate the little vermicelli that to do the little nest. Vermicelli pasta. Like this, put a little bit salt. And again, you put it cooking. So that's done. I'm gonna take a little bit of sugar. A port wine glaze is started by caramelizing sugar. This is sugar over here. So I'm making a little caramel now. To do the glaze. It's not gonna take that long. So the grape, they are marinated in vodka and water, which in France we call that eau de vie, you know, but mainly it's that. Champagne grapes. Um, they call the grape champagne grape. Another garnish is mustard sauce. The cooked quail is sliced. It's served cold.
I'm going to put a little bone stock over here for the glaze. Veal stock is added to the caramel. Put one. This is um, truffle, liver mousse, and I make like a little egg shape. Two canals of the truffle mousse are presented. Gustavino's in New York boasts the cooking of executive chef Daniel Orr. Born in the Midwest, he attended Johnson and Wales College and after graduation traveled and worked in Europe, principally France and Belgium. In 1992, he moved to New York. His dessert is a minted melon soup with raspberries. This is a dish that's great after a rich meal. Um, so if you've, if you've really gone all out and had a wonderful rich uh, main course, you can follow it up with a really light dessert. Um, what I have here are some, some uh, seasonal melons. This is honeydew. You could use cantaloupe or um, gallia or any other type of melon. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to blend it in the blender with some orange juice, some dessert wine. I have a, a Riesling, um, some honey, and a pinch of salt. And the salt uh, really brings out the sweetness of the melon. My mother used to always put a little bit of salt on her fresh melon and to bring out the sweetness, and that's what gave me the idea to put it in this dish. Then once it's blended, I'm going to fold in some mint, the berries, and garnish it with, with some fresh mint. And then I have some um, passion fruit sorbet that I have here in the refrigerator waiting to finish up the dish. So it couldn't be simpler. You just take the melon with your liquids. This is about two-thirds of a cup of wine, about a half cup of orange juice, and then depending on your, your melon, you're going to add your, add your honey. Now, in the winter, you're going to need a little more honey. In the summer, if you've got a really sweet melon, you may not need any at all. Sometimes in the summer, I even use a, a drier wine to kind of bring out the complexity of the melon instead of adding a sweetness to it. You have a pinch of salt, not much. You don't really want to taste the salt. It's just there to bring out the sweetness. And then in the restaurant, you always lose the covers of the, the blenders. So we use a, a side towel. And just give it a couple flicks to get it going. You can see it's getting very foamy, and it almost has a, a moussey foam on the top of the, the soup, which is what you're looking for. Then, of course, you taste it. And I like it like this with just a few little chunks of the melon, but if you, if you want it really, really smooth, you can continue to blend it. Now what you want to do is to take 
chilled bowl because this it's very good very it's very important for this dish to have it very icy and cold and you're going to pour out I used like to use a big bowl because it really adds drama to the dish and then you're going to sprinkle it with the mint Garnish it with your berries, some nice big blackberries, some raspberries. You could use wild strawberries, you could use uh, black raspberries, whatever's in season. Finish it up with a couple blueberries here. I had my pastry chef make some sorbet, but you could use your own uh, favorite brand. And I'm gonna make a canal, which is an egg shape. Just put that in the center and then garnish it. And you couldn't have a simpler dessert that's more refreshing.